Okay, so let's take a look at level of processing theory and how this theory explains how certain types of processing or working with information can be more effective than other types. So they start off with this continuum um, that we see here. On one end, we have sort of the shallow processing. On the other hand, we have deeper processing. The most shallow type of processing for, you know, be relevant like for a student would be just to look at something. So maybe, you know, just looking at something in a textbook, not necessarily really even reading it might be the most shallow form of processing, right? Maybe a little more meaningful would be to read it, and yet we all know that we are capable often of reading a page of text while our minds are wandering. <laughs> so I would say that another type of processing that would also be pretty shallow would be sort of reading without really thinking about the meaning. So that would be sort of another example of shallow processing. And I would probably put that one you know, kind of over here on our continuum. And then as we go move towards more towards the middle, we can imagine that being like maybe reading while you are thinking about the material. And as we get further into deep processing, um, the, according to the theory, well, what is deep processing? And it's essentially anything that involves thinking about and working with the meaning of the stuff that you are reading. Focusing on the meaning, focusing on, you know, maybe making diagrams, those kinds of things. Things that kind of require you to really process the content, you know, of, of what you're studying instead of just looking at it very, in a very basic kind of surface way. And so another way you can think about it is the deep meaning gets to the meaning, you know, deep processing gets to the meaning of things, whereas shallow processing really kind of is more of a surface, just you kind of stick to the surface and use very kind of um, limited processing. You know, it's basically kind of just like looking at a word or a series of sentences or even a paragraph, sounding things out, listening to someone, you know, speak to you is relatively shallow, but starts to move, you know, a little bit towards the middle along this continuum. And then more on this side of the continuum, then we really have thinking about the meaning of what you're looking at, maybe drawing diagrams and those kinds of things. As a theory, it's a little bit limited or maybe even problematic because it's a little bit circular because, well, what is shallow processing? Shallow processing are types of activities that don't lead to good memory. There's no independent way to verify that these things are really shallow, in other words. And then likewise, well, what is deep processing according to the theory? Well, they define deep processing as, yes, using the meaning, but there's no real explanation about why um, that uh, leads to better recall and better memory versus, you know, these things over here. For the activity that half of you or approximately half of you were in group A and approximately half of you were in group B. And so group A, you were the group that had to count the number of vowels, right? To count the number of vowels, you really just have to picture the word, right? And kind of look at it, but you don't really necessarily have to think about what it means. In contrast, group B had to rate how useful the item would be on a deserted island. And that definitely requires you to think about what that item, you know, means. And so the activity that you did, you sort of was trying to put you on the two ends of this continuum where group A is really kind of just looking at the word you know, using very shallow processing and counting the number of vowels. You don't have to think of the meaning to do that. And group B definitely had to think of the meaning as you consider, you know, hey, how useful would this be to me if I was on a deserted island? Um, and so typically that type of processing definitely leads to better recall.